So welcome to Squash John series here of Let's Get to Know. And today I've got the great pleasure of getting to know Marwan El Shabagi. Yesterday it was your coach, Marwan. Today it's you. I've I've really hit the jackpot this week here in Cairo. Hi Johnny, how are you? No, I'm happy to be here with you and uh, look forward to this interview. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we're also going to try and get Rod over here for a little uh, a little game afterwards. It's going to yeah. yeah I've, we hope that we're, there'll be plenty of laughs and uh, yeah. and maybe a few a few funny faces coming out of that one. Uh, Bye. Bye. Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah. Well done. I still think then, he's uh, the greatest of all time. <laughs> oh. And then what? The female? Shabini. Yes, correct. Half a point for Rod. Oh, this oh. is better than I thought it would be. Uh, Rod loves his drop contest. You know, 20 minutes. Who's going to make the least mistakes? What did he say the result was? Out of 10 times, how many does he win? Eight. Yeah, he thinks so full of himself. You're unlucky. You're unlucky. Because when I asked him, he what? said eight at first, and then he goes, no, make it ten. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 oh, my God. Into things with you. Um, I want to I want to go back, really wind back the clock. You were 14, 15 years old. Uh, you're, you're a top junior, and then you follow in your, in your brother's footsteps, and you go to Millfield in, in England and start working with the great Jonah Barrington. A lot of, you know... I can imagine for you at that age, it still must have been quite daunting to go over to England as a young fellow and, and change of country, change of scenery, change of everything, change of life. Yeah, I mean, it was a big decision, of course, uh, having to make at such a young age. I mean, honestly, uh, my parents are the ones that made that decision for me because they, when you're young, you really don't know what's best for you and what are the right decisions to make and stuff. So uh, I think my parents basically wanted to give me and my brother the same opportunities and uh, I moved a year after my brother moved uh, and uh, I, honestly I think it was the best decision ever that's ever been made for me because um, before I moved to England like I, I wouldn't say I took uh, squash so serious you know I was still like one of the top juniors. But Winning moved, British, British junior opens by the way not being serious. No I actually <laughs> well that happened when I moved to England. Okay, see, okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. No I was very fortunate to be in Milfield school and having Jonah and Ian Thomas working with me and Joey of course was helping and having and being to train at the same place where my brother trained at Milfield was such a great setup for me honestly and the school was amazing so um, I had a great time there and uh, I, the feeling of leaving my country as you said and uh, leaving my family and my friends and uh, you know completely change of culture was a big was, was, was so important for me because I started taking a, a lot more responsibilities in my life and uh, this is where it all started you know I won the British under 17 and under 19 and then won the World Juniors a couple of times as well so I think moving to England was the main reason why I had a successful junior career. Yeah there, there we go and I mean you've had uh, in England you've you obviously worked with Jonah Barrington then you were with, with Hadrian Stiff uh, now with Rodney, of course. Um, I want to sort of move on to the 2017 World Open final. Um, you belong to that very elite or special category of siblings that have been in the top 10, but you're the only two that have ever played. Oh, sorry, I have to correct myself there because British Opens back in the late 50s, we had brothers in the Khan family playing each yeah. other. But other than that, uh, certainly in the modern game, it's only been you and Muhammad where a family's been in a World Open final, the most important match of the year, you know, singular match. I want to just sort of give us a bit of a, an insight into how was it like on that day? You know, you go to breakfast, did you sit together or did you sort of sit apart? I mean, you're pretty chilled together. So I'm just wondering how was it on that day, the whole, everything in and around it? I mean, it was, uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was definitely a special day for, uh, for the family, but it was one of the hardest day I had, to, both of us had to deal with. Uh, I mean, I think that's, that, that was the first season. Me and my brother used to share rooms. And uh, I think that that 2017 season that uh, I think my brother started that he lost the world number one spot and he wanted to come back that season to world number one. Uh, I think me and my brother, we, we were, we used to, we started to play at the latest stage of the big events in that season. So uh, that was one of the first few events that my brother stopped sharing the rooms with me. Okay. Uh, um, so, which helped a lot, you know, everyone having his own space during the event, especially when we play at the latest stages of the tournaments, if we get to play in the semis and the finals. So, it's always better that everyone have his own space. So, uh, um, I mean, honestly, that day was full of emotions, of course, you know, because I at that, at that day I knew how much my brother wanted to win the World Championship and uh, 
I, I never played a World Championship final, and you know it was all exciting for me. And uh, I had no, I had no pressure, but I also wanted to win at the same time. So uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was so hard for both of us because we knew that whoever wins will stop his brother from winning a World Championship. You know, so as much as it's a good day, but it, it will also be a bad, sad day for someone. You know, but uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, it was it was tricky. My dad also flew, especially from Egypt that day, to come and you know be there as well for the for a moment like this. But I mean that morning, I uh, I, I tried to avoid him as much as possible. You, you know, I, I knew he was practicing before me, so now I made sure that the physio I do the physio session at the same time, and uh, I was sneakily looking at him from very far and seeing him how he's training <laughs> and how he's wife. practicing. But uh, yeah, and then. You know, once you get on court, it's it's a war because I know he wanted to win so badly, and I wanted to win also. And uh, you know, the the good thing about me and my brother when we play, we kill each other on court. But once it's done, it's done. Uh, we're both very aggressive on court. We, we play. We like to play very tough and very. Sometimes we play fast, and you know, the match always have something. You know, so uh, always something special. You know, because two brothers, two brothers are uh, competing at the highest stage. You know. Uh, I mean, it's a day I will never forget, uh, for sure. Yeah, it was incredible. You lost three two. It was a great match, though, and possibly you were the one with, who was more released uh, in terms of the way you were able to play. Like you said, underdog, uh, and and almost got through. Let's let's hope that you get another chance. Who knows? Yeah. You're working with Rodney now, and uh, he's certainly on a good track at the moment. But so is your brother. Funnily yeah, enough, yeah, yeah. we'll come back to that. Um, now, Rodney, I, I've always sort of uh, put it out there. This guy, for me, technically, is in terms of. The way he gets, you know, he, he gets on court with players. The way he can go into detail. There's nobody who can analyse it, break it down better. He's like a, like a master engineer for me. Is this uh, the golf course just behind us, Sam? Oh, big, uh, they're doing a lot of curating. Did you manage to get out on the golf course with Rodney by chance? Because he, no, he, he was yet. four over for nine holes. No, no, he's too good. He's Is too he? good. I've seen him play the other day. It was no. I'm well, he shot four over. He said I'm he's normally far. he's normally as you said technically he's good. You know? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's technically he's good. No. So how do you, what I want to ask is like the, the modern game, obviously you started in 2010 on tour, 13 years and things, you know, you've been through an unbelievable era, Shabana, and Matthew, you even caught the end of Palmer and Linku and then uh, James Wilstrop and Gaultier and your brother. You're making just, me feel old now. Well, it, You're yeah. making me feel old. Tell me, tell us, tell us how the game is developing and changing uh, in terms of speed, power, the cut and thrust. I mean, now it's changed uh, a lot. Now, uh, now it's, it's 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 so hard, of course, because you play at such a fast pace and you have to do it for a very, for a long longer duration. You know, you have to be physically, mentally, and you know, even improve your game. Uh, you try to improve and minimize your weaknesses as much as possible on court. I think I think it's uh, and the squash is harder. I feel physically, especially on the body and. Uh, and I think the depth as well, you know, you look at, you know, someone like Joel Meekin, like he's not even inside the top 10 and look what he's achieving. And you have players that are coming back from in, from injuries like Dawad, Abul Ghar, Yusuf Ibrahim. And yeah. those players yeah. are not even playing in, during yeah. this season. So imagine, you know, the next Bulgars season. Bulgars 70 something. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> But we know that that's not true. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's so hard. But I would say also the old, I mean, playing like the older generation, I always say that that was the best generation of, you know, of, ever that came that played the sport you know the generation of nick and james and not rodney jahanga james well i wasn't I, I, that, that's there, an interesting there, point you there, brought up there, there wow there wasn't i mean there wasn't much squash tv that you could see <laughs> yeah, like yeah, we yeah. can wake out like uh, like and i've lived you know i've seen nick and greg and my brother coming you know coming to them and uh, giving them you know tough matches at the beginning and then Rami, Shabana, Darwish, I mean, Lenko, Palmer, I've seen, you know, James. So it's, um, I always say that was the best generation that ever came. Golden you know? generation. The Jonah golden generation. Call, yeah. uh, 100% the golden generation. I feel we as a generation were, were a bit unlucky that we came straight <laughs> after them. Yeah. Uh, because, we didn't get the, uh, the bottom of the dip, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I always say every time I stepped on court with Rami and Nick, and I always feel I was so lucky. Uh, yeah. To be able to get on court with them and they say, uh, say that you know, I, you know, say, I beat Greg one time and saying that I beat Nick one time or something, you know, I, I, I always like I, I always made sure that I enjoy I enjoy just being getting on court with them. Uh, and even with my brother now, whenever I get on court with him, like I want to also enjoy just getting enjoying you know the battle with him because it's so much on court that you have to deal with when you play him, you know, because. 
He's the only player that I, will, I always say that he's the only player before I go on court with him, I always wonder what is he going to do today? How yeah, is he going to play? Yeah. You know, like, is he going to play fast? He's got, he can change, you know, the way he plays just like... A quick drop tactic sometimes yeah. after one all maybe and he comes yeah. in and tries to hit some, some sneaky winners. Exactly, you know, so always, it's, 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 it's always hard, hard, very hard to play. I always find from that perspective. Uh, but yeah, yeah, generation before us, I mean, I've, it was it was unbelievable. It was yeah. unbelievable. You know, mentally, it was they were uh, they were they were unbelievable. You know, yeah, exactly. even though maybe you watch the matches right now and you say it's it's a bit enjoyable now to watch, like in terms because it's of the how fast the matches are. Maybe you say the matches were a little bit slower maybe than now, but still, like just being around this generation was. Uh, yeah, you can, it was the thing scary. Is, yeah, exactly. You can look back, and it's, just as an example, I think Canary Wharf, James Wilstrop, like cramping up in the back corner yeah. and then falling over. Can't even finish the match. So yeah. I think you touched upon it. It's just that yeah. mental toughness. Yeah, of those Nick, guys. Nick could play just fast, volley everything for yeah. five yeah. games. So it's unbelievable. And Greg used to be a nightmare to <laughs> yeah. play the first few rounds. You know, it always go in the match when 11 love, 11 1. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives you no chance. Yeah. No, he was... talked about the. Uh, the direct route to the semis, the autobahn, where he yeah, just crushed he, people three love early. Joke. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And yeah. Chabana, I mean, the only thing I always regret, the only one time I played Chabana, it was one time that he actually couldn't finish the match because he had like first like some issues off court. Uh, but I would have, I would have loved to be on court with him for more, more for sure. Yeah, another just a maestro with with that, yeah. with the racket skills, very silky. Now you're a smooth operator yourself. Um, I, I've always been a huge fan of, of your of your yeah. technical side. Uh, your brother. He's on, uh, oh, he's on a run of form, mate. I mean, what yeah. we're seeing here, yeah. is, it a, is it a kind of new brand? Like, we're talking, you know, he's going up on that short line. He's chopping and changing the, the shots. He's, he's killing the ball long. He's, not, he's giving no breathing space for his opponent whatsoever, and his accuracy levels are unbelievable. I mean, I mean I'm going to back him today against, he's playing in the final today against Moman, but I feel like this is, this is what we're going to see more of from Muhammad the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, you can never write him off, you know. Uh, even like I knew when he had a bad season and he lost motivation, he wanted to stop, you know. I mean, of course, because I'm so close to him, so I knew all the insights of it. But I've always believed you will come back from this. Yeah, you know, if, yeah. if you have to put money on one player to come back from a terrible season, and his terrible season is still like getting, going to world number five, so it's not like going outside the top ten, or it's not like a nightmare. Oh. You know, he's still even when he was even even when he had bad. Even during the war season, you would always say he's a contender in this event, you know. You can never write him off. And I've seen it so many times where my brother used to, like, dominate more than this. I mean, used to dominate, of, of course. course. But the, I would see him injured or I would see, before an event and not even ready. But I, I would always have the feeling that he would be able to go through that tournament and win a British Open, you know. Yeah. I remember yeah. he had a problem, big problem. And even some of the doctors told him, how did you manage to play on this leg, for example? Yeah, and I'm sure yeah. other players, we all go through that, right? We all, we, like you, you play through sickness, you play through injuries. We all, we all have done it. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, he has done it uh, for so many years. It's amazing. It's incredible, you know, to just see it. I mean, I was watching his match yesterday and the way he was, he did not feel comfortable from the first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. how he just kept pushing through, and every time you would think Diego got him, you, my brother would step it up even more. Yeah, he was launching more attacks. Like it was that, unbelievable. Yeah. I was sitting in bed watching it, and I was, like the, first, the last game, I was just on my feet. You know, I couldn't sit down. It was <laughs> standing I was, up. I was, yeah. Couldn't believe it. The yeah. quality was 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 that great. Was seriously, you know, uh, uh, both of them and Diego as well. I mean, yeah, I feel he's, sad for him because he does not deserve to lose as well. So. He, he played a fantastic match. He's been on a great form. He's, you know, he's, I mean, this season, when you look at it, I mean, that's what's good about this generation that I'm actually so interested in. Like, like last season, we've had like seven majors and we had like five different winners or four different, like yeah. we had a lot yeah, of different winners. Mix. And right now, you look at this season, at the beginning of the season, my brother was dominating. And then Ali, you know, reached the final of the Egyptian Open and, uh, no, won the Egyptian won it, yeah. Open and lost the final, but he could have maybe won the US Open if it happened. Then, then my brother had a patch where he dominated again, yeah, you know, yeah, San yeah. Francisco, New Zealand, Singapore, and then Asal won Hong Kong, Houston, and yeah, then yeah. Diego won TOC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, so it's, it's, it's keep like shifting around, don't exactly, they? Exactly, yeah. you know, so it's, and then Ali now is coming back from an injury. I'm all, I was there, Paul is going to come back, I'm sure. And, yeah. 
So it's it's a good mix now as well. You know, it's, it's a lot of quality matches. So it's a lot of players can win majors. You know, anything could happen. Absolutely. I mean, I said uh, I said on the comms during the week, you're parked at number six. Uh, your average is nine eighty, just under a thousand. And the next guy at seven, where Victor Cron this week has uh, reached another personal milestone. Yeah. He's uh, around the eight hundred eight hundred mark. So there's a big gap. There is average wise, there's a big gap. Mm. And Rodney also said it yesterday that there's a solidification of the top six. So there's a there's a chasing pack there mm. that are very strong as well. Cruan and uh, and Macon and Moman and all that. I mean, um, everyone was yeah. everyone is is doing. Everyone's playing. I mean, you look at this event. Everyone played well. Yeah. Really, apart from maybe Paul would be. I'm sure would be a bit disappointed. But apart from that, like everyone. Everyone played well in this event. Yeah, yeah, it's a, go- it's a lot of good matches as well. A golden era, a platinum era, maybe. Developing. Hopefully, hopefully. Last hopefully. question, Marwan. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit early, really, to ask. I'm not going to ask it anyway because, you, like I said, your smooth operator style of of uh, beautiful ball striking, there's so much fluency. Um, would you turn your hand at coaching post career, mm-hmm. uh, or have you got other things in mind? Uh, I'm not suggesting anything, by the way. Uh, you're making me feel old in this interview. <laughs> I don't know what are you trying to. to, to. <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, look, I mean, I wouldn't make coaching like my full time job, yeah. but I would definitely something like I would definitely stay involved in the sport. I think I could be a good, very good coach. Me too. Because the way I play, uh, like sometimes I actually look at players, I'm like, if they only do that, yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah. can be somewhere else. And, and I know I can teach, you know, because it's all about for me getting into the position. That's one of the reasons I actually went to Rodney as well, because I felt I lost that a little bit in the last season. Plus, I lost a lot of motivation and all that. And I know going to Rodney would just make me come back to how I was playing, you know. And uh, but I was surprised because, you know, he's, he has one or two good ideas that are not bad. So <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. it's OK. Funny thing is, the irony is that Muhammad originally went to him mm. to deal with the problem of you. Yeah. That's one of the main reasons. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? The hunter has become the hunted. <laughs> True, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, uh, my brother played very well, actually, when he was with him, he uh, he changed his game a bit, and he started lifting the ball a bit more, I remember, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I guess so, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll round it up there, Marwan, because we're going to try and get a hold of Rodney yeah. and do this, uh, do this head-to-head clash. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but I want to thank you very much no, for joining you. us here today. Enjoyed it's been it. brilliant, very insightful. Um, a lot of, uh, a, lot of a, a nice sort of look back at the last 15 years as well. And we wish you the best of luck on thank your you. quest also to thank become you, world number one world champion. Thank you. Thanks, I appreciate mate. It. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. got four championship balls for Mohamed Al Shabagi, his third final. He's done it, Mohamed Al Shabagi's done it. Marwan running out to choose at the end there. So Mohamed Al Shabagi, his third. World Championship final, he gets the title. Some terrific squash between the two brothers. Really, really good squash. You see the face, you can relax now. He's been through it a bit, Mohamed Al Shabagi emotion. 71 minutes of very entertaining, nerve wracking squash. Mohamed Al Shabagi overcoming his brother, Marwan Al Shabagi. Three games to two. Then the moment you've all been waiting for, we'll invite Lufu Rahman to come forward to present the Men's World Championship Trophy. Please show your appreciation for the Men's 2017 AJ Bell PSA World Champion, Mohamed El Shabagi! <laughs>
one last thing. I want to thank everyone for coming here today. You guys have been great all week. And I want to present two people to come into court because, to be honest, this trophy shouldn't be mine. This trophy is, uh, is for my mom and dad. So I would like them to come into court. Please, come, 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 come. come. They're just uh, making their way down to court now. A nice man. We're going to let you enjoy this, OK? I want to I wanna present the current world champion, my mum and my dad. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>